Ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> We're all ready. Good morning, everyone. Yep, and welcome to it. Thank you for joining us for worship on this second Sunday in Lent. Uh, I'd like to first acknowledge that we are worshiping today on land that has been inhabited by Indigenous peoples from time immemorial. As settlers, non-Indigenous peoples, we are grateful for the opportunity to be here and to worship. Long before today, Indigenous peoples have been the stewards of this place. We especially acknowledge the Huron-Wendat, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and St. Lawrence Iroquois peoples. And we note this territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties. So welcome to everybody who is watching us online. For the first time, we're live streaming our services to YouTube because changes that Facebook made, which were very frustrating, made it too challenging for us to continue live streaming the services to Facebook. So thanks so much to Quentin Robinson, our clerk of session and video technician extraordinaire, for making this change so that we can continue to broadcast our services to those who are not able to attend in person. Now, Coffee Hour will be held after worship today in the church hall, so please do come downstairs and join us for coffee and fellowship. You go through the doors on either side of the choir loft and down the stairs and you'll follow the noise um, we're actually starting this month tamara correct me if i'm wrong we're going to be doing coffee hour every sunday after church so yes but that's if we have enough volunteers so please check the sign up sheet in the hall talk to tamara and sign up to bring goodies on on um, on sunday afternoon today is Loaves and Fishes Sunday, and we know our church supports the work of this restaurant with our donations of money and time. Uh, donations of food, there's a basket at the back of a sanctuary, or you can drop them off to the church office during regular church office hours. Um, and also financial donations are welcome through your regular offering envelope. Please mark it clearly that it's for loaves and fishes. Our, and I don't have it with me here, but our um, Sanctuary for Lent 2023 devotionals have finally arrived. They're on the table at the back of the sanctuary, or they're also available through the church office. The devotional contains brief readings for each day in Lent, from Ash Wednesday through to Easter Day, and include a suggested scripture, a devotion, and a prayer. Uh, this annual favorite, we try to provide them every year, helps readers faithfully journey through Lent as they prepare to experience the joy of the resurrection. Just a reminder to members of session, we'll be meeting this Tuesday, March 7th, instead of Wednesday, March 8th, 
and we will be meeting in the church hall, so please make note of that change in date. Some of you may have seen the article in the Recorder and Times, but good news for our refugee sponsorship of, for Brockville Freedom Connection. After three plus years of waiting, Nazro Aden Mohammed will finally be re reunited with her husband, Levon, and daughter, Afnan, who will be arriving on, in Ottawa on Wednesday afternoon. So many thanks to all of you who have supported this sponsorship with your efforts and your prayers. Also on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, March 8th, or March 8th, I'll be leading the midweek Lenten service at Wall Street United Church at 12 noon, so followed by a light soup lunch. Uh, so if you'd like to attend, please feel free to do so. Um, and I will also continue to uh, post the midweek online services as well. Uh, just an early reminder that Daylight Savings Time begins next Sunday, March 12th. So please make sure you set your clocks forward one hour before you go to bed on Saturday night so you don't miss church. And also the 2022 annual report will be available next Sunday because we'll be having our annual meeting uh, on March 19th. Also our esteemed editor is reminding everyone that it's almost time because the next edition of the Challenge newsletter is planned for distribution on Palm Sunday. So please see the bulletin for items that you can contribute. Email your stories and pictures to firstkirk at truespeed.ca or drop them off at the church office. And I have one other note of great excitement. It was so exciting that I only got it this morning. Let me find it here. It's on my cell phone. Let me go. Good news. Congratulations to Mark Leslie and his partner, Kathy Blair, who successfully defended their crown at Dancing Stars of Leeds Grenville. They, it's the final season of Dancing with the St Dancing Stars of Leeds Grenville, and I, Mark would like to express his thanks to the congregation for their support of the, he and Kathy, and also our, their esteemed choreographer, who was Spencer Moreau and Ingrid Doucette, so it was quite a First Presbyterian thing there going. Um, and they, uh, they, had, they, they were able to rehearse in the church hall, for which they were very thankful, and also the congregation's support was amazing. Uh, going into the evening, they had raised over $3,800 for the Volunteer Center of Leeds and Grenville, and that, plus donations received during the competition, made them one of the top four fundraising team. So congratulations to Mark and Kathy for a great effort. Uh, there are many, many other items in the bulletin, so please do take, read them and diarize those that are of interest to you. Uh, please also check our church website and our social media accounts for the latest information on what is happening at First Church. Uh, just another note that I wanted to pass along, we thank Barb Morrison for coming to play for us today as Kathleen Howard had to a medical issue that she needed to deal with today. So she's going to be okay, but thank you to Barb for being here today and playing for us. So let us now come to God with our call to worship, which is in your order of service and online. Let us read responsibly. Just as the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness, the Spirit sends us into places of uncertainty where we confront our weakness and insecurities. Even when our situation changes, we cling to the tried and true. We insist that what works in the past will work in the future. Yet, Jesus calls us to die to our old ways so that the new will emerge. He said that we need to be born again to see God's new realm. Embracing God's realm will mean accepting different principles that no longer feed our egos. It will mean putting the needs of others before our own. We know the depth of God's love revealed to us in Jesus, God's Son. When we are reborn by God's Spirit, we will go where the Spirit leads us and love as God loves us. And our opening hymn is number 187, We Have Come at Christ's Own Bidding. You're welcome to stand if you wish or remain seated if you prefer to sing this hymn. Let us sing together.
now let us pray together as we approach God. God of majesty and mercy, Christ, both Lord and servant, spirit of new life, your mystery embraces the vast reaches of the universe, and yet you are present with us in the course of our daily lives. With even the tiniest spark of your wisdom illuminated the great com greatest complexities. With the smallest gesture of your love, you renew our hope. Deepen our sense of your holy presence this day. Assure us that your love will never let us go. And so we offer our praise and our prayers to you this day to you. Holy God, Holy One and Holy Three, with humble hearts and faith that seeks understanding. Please be seated. We will now come together as we pray our prayer of confession, which is also in your order of service. God of mystery and mercy, we confess that we prefer simply, simple certainty to seeking for deeper understanding. We settle for what we know, ignoring our doubts and questions. Forgive us when our faith falters, because what we think no longer satisfies. Open our eyes to the truth you hold out to us in Christ, and give us courage to rethink what we have assumed about you and your love for the world. The Apostle Paul declared that from now on we regard no one from a human point of view. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See Everything has become new. Thanks be to God for the love that gives us all a new start this very day. Amen. Now I'd like to invite the children to come forward. We'll see what's in the gospel box for today. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Nice to see you guys today. I missed you last week. I had to go to a meeting instead. It's not very exciting. So anyway, you guys want to come down over here? Come on. Come on. Let's go see up. Okay. Let's see what's in the gospel box today. Ooh, what is this? Now, this is something that each of you I know likes to look into. What is this called? Well, close. Close. Yep, color and shapes in it. What's it called? What's the name? Swirly thingies. Swirly thingies. It's called a kaleidoscope, okay? How many of you ever looked through a kaleidoscope? You've looked through one? Frankie, Lynn, have you ever looked through one? I okay. Looked through like 50. Oh, you looked through 50 of them. Yep, you hold it up to a light and you look through it and you move the end and you can see all kinds of different shapes. You want to have a try it, Lynn? I'm going to give it a try. It creates very colorful designs. Every time you move it, it seems there's a new design that gets created. Okay, yeah, it's kind of cool, isn't it? Keep turning it, keep turning it. You can see it makes all kinds of different shapes, doesn't it? Yeah. I'll let you guys take it downstairs with you for Sunday school, okay? Yeah. But it reminds me of a story. You do? Oh, okay. You want to tell it? No. No. <laughs> okay. Because I'm quite happy if you want to tell it. This lesson, is the story is about Jesus and three of his disciples. They go to a very high mountain. And when they arrive at the top, something wonderful happens. The disciples see a vision. They see a vision. The vision was Jesus, he changed. And this is what the Bible says happened. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as snow. And the story continues. Then there was a bright cloud that covered them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So this is a wonderful story to tell Jesus, uh, tells about how Jesus changed his appearance so that the disciples could know who he really was. He's God's son. That's, it's called transfiguration, which is just a big, long word for change. Okay? Yep. And just as we point the kaleidoscope to the light and we change, it shows all these dazzling shapes and colors and swirls. I mean, it's not as bright as what Jesus' uh, uh, transfiguration must have been. It's not nearly that bright, but it's the next best thing I could think of. 
to tell you how wonderful it must have been. So the next time you look through a kaleidoscope, and you get a chance to do it when you, Denise, I'll give it, make sure Denise has it, and you can take it downstairs. Think about Jesus, and think about the time he took his disciples up to the mountaintop and changed himself because he was God's son. So they believed he was God's son, and we do too. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for showing us who you are. Thank you for the stories of the Bible that tell us how much you love each of us. Help us to be amazed by all you do every day. We believe in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So, yeah, you guys can take that downstairs if you want. It won't break. It's not fragile. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this gracefully. There we go. And now let us bow our heads as we pray for insight into the word that God has for us today. God of wisdom, we turn to scripture to listen and to learn. Send your Holy Spirit to help us listen carefully so that we hear what we have not heard before and learn to follow Christ with deeper understanding and renewed commitment. Amen. Now I'd like to invite Francis Lebrun to come forward. Francis will be doing, reading our scripture lessons for us for today. Good morning, everyone. This morning's psalm responsive reading is taken from Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. And now our our, uh, scripture reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 to 9. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Do not be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Do not tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been risen from the dead. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God within us, and for the word of God around us. Thanks be to God.
gracious and loving God, may the message that you have to bring to those who are gathered here today, may it come through me or if need be, in spite of me, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Don't just stand there, do something. I'm sure you've all heard this command in your lives in urgent or emergency situations. And in our text today, which describes what is referred to as the transfiguration of Jesus, Peter blurts out an imperative, kind of similar to that, to re in response to witnessing not only the appearance of Moses and Elijah, but Jesus' glowing transformation. Overwhelmed and awed by the whole event, Peter's reaction likely would be similar to ours in such a moment. Do something. Don't just stand there. Get to work. Do this. Do that. Produce. Achieve. This kind of thinking is built into the very fabric of our culture, into the fabric, in fact, of our religion, that Protestant work ethic and all that. And yet, it's also the source of so much anxiety and stress. Because we're tired, we've bought into the myth of identity based on accomplishment. And if we don't accomplish anything, then we do not know who we are. Because for so many of us, our doing is who we are, it's our identity. So Peter's insistence on doing something in response to the transfiguration, well, it's, it's pretty natural. But then God's voice from heaven interrupts his jabbering to say, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. In other words, stop talking and doing and simply pay attention. Just listen. When the call that Jesus puts on us when we become Christian results in us as disciples to go forward to do all sorts of things, it's, we respond to that call and it's because it is a response and not as a condition for our identity as God's precious children because that identity comes as a gift to us, free and undeserved, God's children. But for so many of us, yours truly definitely included, we have all but forgotten or perhaps never even known simply how to be. We get so action-oriented that we fail, like Peter, to be contemplative and spiritual and grounded in our, centered in our reality of God's presence in our lives. To be in awe of the mystery of God so that our doing can be meaningful and purposeful and sustainable. The trick, as in most things, is balance. Knowing when to do and when to just be. We learning to take our call as children of God seriously, but not too seriously. To let go of our need to be in control and to listen instead for the voice of God so that our actions are not merely the proverbial running around like a chicken with our heads cut off, but are instead true acts of discipleship that spring from having spent time reflecting on and being grateful for God's gracious love for us. Some of you might say that I'm wrong or misguided, and some of you might even think I'm crazy at times. But one thing I've never been is lazy. I work hard. I've always been an overachiever, and quite frankly, I admit I like the affirmation I've received from being told, wow, you get a lot done. You're a real overachiever. But too often my motivations for working hard are not exactly noble. 
And I suspect many of you have the same challenge. Many times I stay busy because I need to justify my life to God and to you and to myself. I want you to be impressed to think, how does she do all that? But here's the more difficult point. I stay busy because if I ever let up, if I ever get quiet and contemplate where God is moving in my life and what God might be calling me to do, then I might have to actually deal with that. And it might not be what I want. It just might be something calling me outside my comfort zone that God's calling me to do, but I'm so busy, I don't hear it. I stay busy and occupied to fill the time and space, not just to serve God, but sometimes so I don't have the time or energy to hear God's voice calling to me. You see, I'm not afraid in the stillness that God will not speak to me, Rather, I'm afraid that he will. No doubt, Peter was thinking the same thing. He wants to get busy with his own agenda because he was likely not too thrilled with Jesus' whole take up your cross and follow me thing. But this voice from heaven persisted. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And it's the same voice that beckons to us as we continue this Lenten journey together into suffering, to the cross, and it's for which this transfiguration was intended to prepare Jesus, the disciples, and us. A few weeks ago, I mentioned to you about knowing who we are and whose we are when we looked at the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. We know Jesus listened to God being tempted because he used God's word, the scriptures that he had been taught and steeped in and absorbed since he was a child. And he refuted Satan's enticements. Prior to his time in the wilderness, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan by his cousin John, and the Gospel of Matthew told us then that he saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Jesus knew who he was and whose he was. Throughout the Gospels, we hear stories of Jesus stopping, not being busy, taking time to pray and to refresh and renew himself with with God so that he could keep doing his ministry. The season of Lent calls us to rediscover our own spirituality, to quit our frantic thinking and doing, and to pay attention and to consider who we are as dust, apart from whose we are in our baptism. God's precious children, forgiven, loved, and held. It is only because of that identity that we are then gifted and called and sent out to do God's work in the world. (coughs) Excuse me. If we do not get the being part, then the doing will only be chaotic, frustrated attempts at self-justification, grounded in fear and lacking in joy. So if all you're doing seems like madness and pointless, take some time. Learn again to behold the mystery of God and to enter into a quiet place of awe. Because you know, friends, there will be more than ample ample opportunity for us to live out our calling to discipleship. But to be able to do that, let us take the time during this 
season of Lent <coughs> to stop doing and start being. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me, let us pray. Reveal your presence to us this day, O God, of light, love, and glory. As you did to your servants at the foot of the mountain, send your spirit to show us your story. May the brilliance of your face illuminate this place as we hear your word for us today. And may we, your people, be never unable to tell of all that we have heard. Amen. <coughs> Our next hymn is number 400, Spirit of the Living God. You're welcome again to stand or remain seated for the singing of this hymn. Please be seated. Now I invite you to join with us in the prayers of the people, praying for ourselves, our community, and for our world. And you'll see that it's printed in your order of service with a response. So I encourage you to respond where I say, God, our companion, you respond with walk with us on the way. And so now let us come to the God that walks with us on the way in our daily lives. Let us pray. Lord God, you are our keeper, shade in the heat of the world's troubles, light in every shadowed time of life. In all our comings and goings, we are yours, and so we thank you for your care which sustains us and offer you our trust for those things that we can do nothing about. Thank you for the energy to focus on the things we can do day by day, putting our love and care to work in community and creation. By the power of your spirit, bless us with the insight and passion to act in hope. May your wisdom guide us in all things. Attentive God, we bring our concerns for the world to you in these uncertain times. We think of Abraham and Sarah setting off to an unknown land and pray for people on the move, for those seeking safety and shelter, fleeing violence, remembering especially the people of Ukraine, Afghanistan, Syria, and all refugees for those settling into a new home or community, and for those who must travel, whatever the conditions. God, our companion, walk with us on the way. We think of the psalmist looking to hills, and we pray for people seeking help. For those seeking help for the earth itself as its fragile balances are threatened, for those seeking help to make ends meet as bank balances are threatened for those seeking help for vulnerable people to right the balance of justice, remembering especially the poor, the elderly, the homeless, the lonely, people who are on the margins of our society. God, our companion, walk with us on the way. We think of the disciples turning to Jesus with questions in their hearts, and we pray for people seeking answers, for those with health challenges, 
seeking diagnosis and treatment, for those researching problems and policies, seeking to better our common life, for those wondering if you exist, O God, wondering if you have a purpose for them. God, our companion, walk with us on the way. We think of Jesus calming his disciples amid their fears, challenging us all to follow him in love and faithfulness, for he is our companion on the way, and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Speaking of singing, let's sing the hymn number 760, Where Across the Crowded Ways of Life. Again, you're welcome to stand if you wish to remain seated to sing.
please be seated. And now let us come to God in prayer as we ask for God's blessing on our offerings today. O oh Lord our God, our lives are blessed with the goodness that comes only from you. Let us trust that goodness to sustain us and so offer our gifts to share with the world in need with glad hearts. Uh, you'll see in the bulletin there are many ways in which you can uh, give. You can do it by pre-authorized remittance. You can uh, send your check by mail to our uh, church address. Uh, your offering envelope can come through the church street door. Uh, and also we are happy to take e-transfers if that's easier for you. And there are envelopes in the pews if you don't have an offering envelope right now, visitor's envelope. However you give and whatever you can give, thank you for your love and support of this congregation. And now let us sing our offering praise song, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Generous God, we offer our gifts to you today in gratitude for all that we re have received in Christ and in creation. Bless our offering and our lives so that we can share in the building up of your kingdom in this world you love so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, actually, no, don't be seated because we're going to sing a hymn. In the bulb there is a flower, number 674. And now, friends, as we continue our Lenten journey, remember the promise of the psalmist. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. So go now, trusting that your help comes from God, and may God's presence strengthen you, Jesus' faithfulness guide you, and the wind of the Spirit bring you energy to serve with love now and forever. Amen. The tender shepherd. Yeah, that one, yeah.
RIZIK INI